Thank you for joining. In this lesson, I will explain you what is Entity Framework. I will explain also code first versus DB first approach and DB context and DB set classes. Then we will install Entity Framework. The primary purpose of Entity Framework is to simplify and streamline database operations in net applications. It serves as an object relational mapping framework allowing developers to work with databases using c -sharp or VBNet objects, rather than writing raw SQL queries. Entity Framework handles the translation between object-oriented code and relational database structures, making database interactions more intuitive and efficient. It also provides features for data modeling, querying, and database schema management. In the previous lesson, I have provided the main models for this project with the explanation that C# -sharp classes will be transformed into tables, and the properties within these classes will be designated as columns in those tables. Also, crude operations in Entity Framework require minimal code, and it automatically handles data type conversions. This means, as an example, that string and double values from your code are passed to the database as is. Internally, Entity Framework uses ADA.NET, providing a convenient additional layer of abstraction. On the other hand, ADA.NET and Dapper are known for their faster performance. That's a visual representation of what I have just explained. This is how Entity Framework simplifies our lives by managing the creation of the database schema and translating the code into the database structure. At the top is a code snippet, which actually comes from the next lesson. The Entity Framework consumes this code, resulting in the schema creation and immediate retrieval of database records as soon as data is received. Now about DB-first versus code-first. Let me provide you with an example from the world of JavaScript and React. When you begin learning these technologies, one of the first things you encounter is the choice of approach. If you decide to create a website using pure JavaScript, your approach is imperative. This means you must meticulously specify each step required to achieve a result. On the other hand, when working with React, you adopt a declarative approach. Here you simply declare to React what you want to accomplish. And the library takes care of executing these necessary steps to achieve that result. In essence, you are telling to React what you want, and it handles the how for you. The top part of the slide on your screen is explanation from a book. It can be blurry for you to understand what is DB or code first. I'm always rephrase it with an example at the bottom on your screen. Imagine that you need to go to another city. For that you need to build a road. Road building will be time consuming, resources consuming and many other factors like documenting, planning, subcontractors and so on. But the result will be well known for you, so you will build it exactly as it's required using the best world knowledges. And the second approach when you have a road, but this road is built based on other people's knowledge and there are some factors that may be inappropriate and impossible to change. So if you are a beginner, read both the imperative and declarative sections, with the declarative part being related to entity framework. And before we install entity framework, I will quickly explain the DB context class and DB set class. DB context and DB set are two important components in entity framework. A DB context class represents a section with the database and can be used to query and save instances of your entities. It is responsible for managing the connection to the database and tracking changes to your entities. A DB set class represents a collection of entities and is used to query and save entities of a specific type. So, a DB context class contains one or more DB set objects, with each DB set object representing a collection of entities of a specific type. Now let's visualize the process. At the top there is a string representing the relationship between the controller, DB context class, and the database. Once database is created using the DB context class, the controller will send commands to the all planet DB context class instance to manage the database. In simpler terms, it will send crude commands to perform necessary database transformations. On the left you can see a code snippet showing the all planet DB context class which will be transformed into a database and further managed after its creation. Entity Framework will automatically create the database using the DB context class. When a controller sends a task to be completed, the DB context will take appropriate actions. 
These actions go beyond crude operations and include tasks such as creating and managing connections to the database, tracking changes to entities, and persisting changes to the database. The Planet class, on the other hand, will become a table within this database, thanks to the DBSet class. By default, Entity Framework Code First Approach follows a convention where it creates a table in the database, and the table name is derived from the pluralized version of the entity type name. However, it's important to note that we can override this behavior, and I'll demonstrate how to do so later. Now let's install Entity Framework. In Visual Studio, right-click the project, and then select Manage New Get Packages. After the New Get Manager pops up, you will see two menus – Browse and Install. Open the Browse menu, type in core.sql-server, and choose the option Microsoft Entity Framework SQL Server. Click Install. After the installation is completed, again in the Browse menu, type in core.tools, and select Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools. Again, click Install. After the installation is completed, you can verify in the Installed menu that both packages were added. So, Core SQL Server is a database provider for SQL Server that allows Entity Framework Core to interact with Microsoft SQL Server databases, and Core Tools will create the database, will manage migration, scaffolding, and others. As a reminder, if you need to quickly confirm that your packages were installed, you can open the project configuration file by double-clicking where all installed dependencies are reflected. Additionally, you can verify this by navigating to the Dependencies Packages folder. Alternatively, to install packages, you can go to the Tools menu, then New Get, and choose Package Manager Console. Type Install Package, followed by the package name. In the next lesson, we will create classes and properties for the database schema. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!